Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE NXT on December 7th, 2016, and well, um, this was an interesting show. It took place both in Full Sail University and in Osaka, Japan, where they filmed Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe. Uh, but they started off the show with DIY coming out to do their celebration uh, a, from their tag team title victory at TakeOver. Uh, they immediately get interrupted. Uh, after a pretty lengthy celebration in the terms of them going through the crowd and everything in that sense, they kind of did something like that a while back when Bailey had won the NXT Women's title as well. Um, but they get interrupted immediately before saying anything by the Authors of Pain, and um, and Paul Ellering immediately, you know, uh, puts their bid to be the next number one contenders for the NXT Tag Team titles, but they also get interrupted by The Revival, who kind of like... Uh, I like their aspect. It's like they were going to take the walkway initially, but then they thought better of it, walked down the stairs and up towards the other ramp to try to focus in on DIY and like try to put the Authors of Pain to the side uh, and cut their promo saying, we won our tag team title shot and everything in that sense. They eventually get, um, not attacked, but they get uh, in a stare down with the Authors of Pain who shoved them down. And there's a little bit something that goes here for the future uh, at a uh, a little bit later on in the show to go along with it, but up next was No Way Jose going up against, uh, No Way Jose and Rich Swan going up against Sanity. Uh, the interesting aspects to acts uh, the, the I'm stumbling over my words now. Uh, the interesting aspect to this match was it was an, it, because the match itself was okay, but you had a debut and you had this interesting aspect about Sawyer Fulton, who was not with Sanity. And at the beginning of the at the beginning of the match during their entrance, they hold up his jacket, and Eric Young just slams it on the mat, spits on it, and throws it out of the ring. But also during the match, Big Demo debuts, uh, and he had been part of the indie scene. If you've been watching any of the stuff, he's been kind of seen more with the What Culture Pro Wrestling guys. But he had also done some stuff with TNA as well when they did their UK stuff. But he debuted. They're just calling him Demo. Uh, and he attacks No Way Jose to help Sanity in the end. And he also uh, picks up the jacket afterwards and slams it down. So, like, what is this exactly meaning? What? Why is Sawyer Fulton out of nowhere kind of out of Sanity to get injured or something in that sense uh, to go along with it? Is, that, is Damo going to be the replacement for him? Uh, who knows? Because I, I kind of like the aspect of Sawyer Fulton and Alexander Wolf because... That tag team finisher was really good. Their tag team finisher was a really good one, and I don't necessarily want to see that go away, but it looks like that's where it's going to go at that at that point in time. So we'll see where they go with everything. They also had a backstage segment with William Regal, and what he does is, one, he like this was basically the, one of the reasons why I like William Regal. Uh, the way they portray William Regal as a general manager, most of his segments are just to make the announcements for matches, and that's what they basically are. So, uh, he makes the Revival versus DIY, the rematch, uh, for January 11th on NXT. And then the winners of that have to face the Authors of Pain at the next TakeOver event to go along with it. So, making the matches. And then he gets, um, and then Ty Dillinger comes in. And they start, and he starts cutting a promo, making it seem like he's going to leave NXT or something in that sense because he, because he couldn't beat Samoa Joe and everything and that, everything to go along with it. Um, but William Regal stops him and says, I'm thinking of making this number one contendership tournament where four winners of matches go off to face in a fatal four-way, and I want to put you in it. And, it, and Ty Dillinger kind of goes from that dejected, to optimistic style look and it's like okay I'll do that and then leaves uh, so you have something for the NXT uh, something for the NXT title which is making you assume that Samoa Joe Shinsuke Nakamura is going to probably come to a head very soon and finish off and then you're going to get the next number one contender for the next takeover special to go along with it so uh, they're going to have four number one uh, four matches I think next week and then the w winners of that are going to go on to a fatal four-way. Um, you had Ember Moon go up against Kimberly. Um, Kimber yeah, Kimberly is actually showing up in there. I th she might even have signed with WWE by now. I'm not 100% on that at, at this point in time. 
but um, they had a pretty decent match. Uh, and it wasn't like just a total squash, but they are making Ember Moon look like a million bucks. They are making her like the uh, next opponent for Asuka or the next main challenge for Asuka at some point in time. That's how I feel like they're building her up, and we'll see how that actually plays off in the end. But you also had an aspect of Nikki Cross and Asuka match being teased as well because it, uh, uh, with a segment after Sanity's match with Rich Swan and uh, No Way Jose, uh, you have one of the reporters trying to get uh, something from them uh, about what happened with Sawyer Fulton, or not Sawyer Fulton, but with the big demo and Sawyer Fulton and everything in that sense to go along with it, but they kind of brush it off and then Nikki just uh, stops real quick and there's the NXT women's title. Just sitting there. Asuka just left it there. Almost like to a point of teasing someone. It's like to take a look at it. So she could figure out who her next opponent is. Or something like that. It's because she says, like, I have no competition. So she's just going to leave the title sitting around. It, it, at least that's how you almost feel in a, in a certain sense. And I'm just going to wait for someone to look at it awkwardly. And it's like, okay, you I'm going to beat up next. <laughs> and so they have a stare down. And then Asuka walks off. To go along with it so interesting aspect we'll see where they go with that side of it everything like i said they have ember moon who's looking like a million bucks she's great in the rain has a great finisher uh the look is great too to go along with it the only thing we don't fully know is uh her promos uh she's had a couple pro um had at least one promo so far but uh, they also kind of building a mystique that she's more action than she is talk and everything in that sense to go along with it. Uh, so we'll see how that plays off as well. Uh, you'll probably be seeing, be seeing more matches where they build her up before they actually have her and Asuka face off at some point in time, which is what you're assuming they're going for uh, somewhere in the future. Um, so up next was Samoa Joe going up against Shinsuke Nakamura in the Osaka Japan taped um, uh, match between the two of them for the NXT title and comparatively, comparatively to their other matches this was definitely their weakest something just felt off about this match in every way shape or form uh, whether, it, whether it's an aspect of them just trying to work a different style for Japan or uh, or a style that they felt would have worked for there, or for an aspect of you know them going from the states to Japan and that being the first night of the tour or something in that sense, this match just it didn't click. At least to me, it didn't click. It just kind of it started and then it kind of ended. It never fully got going in any way, shape, or form. You had a couple decent spots in there, but. And the match itself wasn't horrible. It just felt there was something off about this match in some way, shape, or form. They did what they needed to do by putting the title back on Shinsuke Nakamura. You have the bigger moment for you know him winning the title back in Japan and everything in that sense. But it just it just felt off. There was there was something about this match comparatively to the other two that they've had that was uh, just made this one seem a little bit weaker and by uh, not even a little bit a lot weaker than a lot of their other uh, than their other two matches and it just is what it is you, if you see a match that's not necessarily all that great when you've seen them do pretty damn good matches beforehand uh, you got to point it out to go along with that um but they did announce another match between the two of them for a steel cage afterwards as well. So, the, and that one was being filmed. I think it's already been filmed in Melbourne, Australia, on December eighth uh, to go along with it. So they're gonna have the. I think they taped that one, and they're gonna be showing that. Maybe they have a better outing or something in that sense. But like I said, this match in general in Osaka just something felt off about the match it never felt like it fully got going and then it ended with Shinsuke winning like I said it did what it needed to do and the match itself wasn't it wasn't a horrible match but it wasn't that good of a match either to go along with it um so it is what it is in that sense so 
overall, I felt the stuff inside a full sail university was actually pretty good this week. Uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the greatest stuff in the world, but you have some teases for matches in the future. You have matches that were made for the future and everything in that sense to go along with it. So you have stories getting built around around the NXT title, around the tag titles, and uh, you you're seeing stuff between uh, you're seeing the build of Ember Moon to eventually her facing Oscar. At least that's what everyone feels like it's going to be at some point in time. But you also have this thing building between Oscar and. Uh, Nikki Cross from Sanity and you also have this thing with Sanity about Sawyer Fulton what they did with his jacket and essentially it feels like kicking him out but also Big Damo helping out Sanity to go along with it so we'll see where they go with everything here in the near future and uh, we'll see how that steel cage match comes out as well um, hopefully it's not the way that this match ended up coming with Samojo and uh, Shinsuke Nakamura to go along with it. Uh, so we'll see where they go with everything with NXT. And uh, that is my review this week for Dodo NXT. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.